I think the 2020 election had problems. You want to say rigged? You want to say he won? Use whatever vocabulary term you want. I want to focus on the fact that we had big technology firms censoring our fellow citizens in a way that violated our fundamental rights. The fact that you're so obsessed with what you, word I use to describe this phenomenon rather than the phenomenon itself suggests something very broken in the American media. Sure, Jan. Blame the media. That was Senator J.D. Vance earlier today, once again, refusing to admit that Donald Trump lost the 2020 election, and that comes just days after a New York Times interview where Vance dodged the same question five different times. Do you believe he lost the 2020 election? I think that Donald Trump and I have both raised a number of issues with the 2020 election, but we're focused on the future. Yes or no? Okay. Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election. Let, let me ask you a question. Is it okay that big technology companies censored the Hunter Biden laptop story, which independent analysis have said it cost Donald Trump millions of votes? Senator I think that's Vance, the question. I'm going to ask you again, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? And I've election? answered your question with another question. You answer my question and I'll answer yours. That's not how any of this works. Joining me now, former Democratic Congresswoman Donna Edwards, and Brendan Buck, former Chief Communications Advisor to former House Speaker Paul Ryan and former Press Secretary to former House Speaker John Boehner. Both are MSNBC political analysts, and they're here at the table, which makes this great. Brendan, why won't he answer the question? Donald Trump won't let him. Look, there's no strategic gain in doing this. <laughs> J.D. Vance would love to be able to say, yes, of course he lost, and we're going to you know, do something better next time. It is purely about not getting slapped on the hand by his boss. It is uh, probably the most um, self-destructive thing that they do in the debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. When he went on his two-minute rant about how he actually won the, the presidential election in 2020, uh, it was probably the lowest moment. And we saw that dial testing from the Harris campaign, I heard, was the lowest moment that they had the entire time. It doesn't add anything to him. And that's why people are asking, we could move on so quickly. If you would just answer the question mm -hmm. straightforward, they can't because Donald Trump won't let him do it. What do you think, Donna? I mean... I mean, what is there to say? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, the reality is there's one answer to that question, and that is that um, Joe Biden won the election. Uh, J.D. Vance has an audience of one for this question, and no matter how the question is put, he's willing to deflect, diffuse, uh, whatever he needs to do in order to not answer mm -hmm. the question. Including asking the interviewer, well, let me ask you a question. Well, and that's <laughs> not how it works. That's exactly. That's not how it works. Okay, so that's looking back at 2020. Today on the Sunday shows, uh, both on Meet the Press and Face the Nation, uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson was asked about whether he would certify the 2024 presidential election. Here's what he said when he was asked the question on Face the Nation. Watch this. I think there is going to be some cheating in this election. I think non-citizens are going to vote. Speaker, you both in the course of this interview said that you do believe that states have taken measures that will help the integrity of this election. And then you just also seem to undermine confidence in the integrity no, no, of Margaret, the state it, elections. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait, wait just a minute. It's not me undermining it. It's the actions of the Biden-Harris administration in some of these states. Non-citizens are not allowed to vote under federal law. That's the one true thing he said. Non-citizens are not allowed to vote. So then why would he say, I think there's going to be cheating in this election. I think non-citizens are going to vote. Well, non-citizens are not allowed to vote. And I think it was the Heritage Foundation that did this study that said between uh, 2002 and 2023, there were 85 cases. This is millions and millions and millions of votes uh, cast. Non-citizen voting is not a thing, but Republicans keep raising that because they want to put in front of their voters that that's going to result in an unfair election. And so when he says he's not going to, he'll only certify a free and fair election, mm -hmm. they're actually setting up a dynamic to challenge the election result. And actually, let's, and, so, and he gets to that in his, in his interview on Meet the Press. Let's play that. I'm a constitutional law attorney. I've de dedicated my life, devoted my life, and demonstrated every day that I will uphold the Constitution. We are going to do our job in Congress. A free and fair and legal election will be certified, and that is our hope and prayer across the board. Of course I'm going to follow the Constitution. I'm going to follow the law. That's my job. It's my duty. I took an oath to do that, and I will fulfill my oath. 
See, Brendan, my problem here is that there's a lot of free and fair and legal election is doing a lot of work there. And to me, it sounds like it's it's open to interpretation, especially when you remember that then Congressman Mike Johnson in 2020 was part of the cabal trying to overturn a free and fair election in 2020. Yeah, let me paint the picture even potentially more dire. So let's remember, January 3rd is when a new Congress comes in. Re Republicans will need to elect a new speaker. Uh, January 6th is when we certify the Assuming election. Assuming they get the, they win Assuming back Republican, the Assuming Republicans hold the majority. Imagine Mike Johnson needing to get the votes to be speaker when there's a disputed election for Republicans three days later and what he's going to have to do and say to get 218 Republicans to vote for him to be Speaker of the House next, it's not hard to imagine he's going to say, I'm not going to bring up the certification. I'm not going to uh, allow this vote to go forward as a condition to get elected Speaker three days prior to that. So whether or not they challenge it in courts, and all, there's all kinds of things that I think we need to start thinking about what could happen on the House floor if Republicans decide that you know they, some, they win the majority Donald Trump loses, but they're not going to certify that election. Through. And we actually saw sort of a prelude to what could happen on January 3rd, 2025, by how many times it took Kevin McCarthy to win the gavel. How many votes? 18? We may not 15? have a speaker on January 6th. That's what I'm saying. We, we may not even have a speaker on January 6th to be able to do this. Now, I think they can still... They could still power ahead, even without a speaker. This could get happened. But I'm just trying to everyone remember. Right. We went three weeks this, con this past Congress without a speaker <laughs> when they kicked Kevin McCarthy out. It's not easy for these people to get on the same page uh, uh, if Republicans do hold the House. I think those are very real scenarios we need to Well, think. then let's flip the script. Because as I, as I pointed out, Democrats could take the majority. Hakeem Jeffries could be the next Speaker of the House. Then how does the dynamic change, do you think? Well, I think Hakeem Jeffries is committed to certifying uh, the election and the election results. And remember, um, Congress, last Congress passed the Electoral Count Act so that um, they could really try to deal with some of these issues of having a, an election that they could certify. And that time between uh, the November election and when electoral votes are, are counted is actually going to be one of the most crucial times that we have in this country. And so I, I listen to Mike Johnson, and I think he is absolutely laying the groundwork, as all these Republicans are, uh, to challenge this election.